Well, here we go with lesson B of Unit 5D, Magnetic Fields and Conductors. Uh, as we've mentioned previously, magnetism and electricity are very closely connected. They're really two sides of the same coin that we call electromagnetism. We're going to be exploring the relationship between electricity and magnetism in conductors in this video. So here we go. We've been talking about how moving electric charges will have a force exerted on them by a magnetic field as those charges move through a magnetic field. Now, if we think about current, right, a current moving through a wire is nothing more than a whole bunch of electric charges moving from one point to another. So it should make sense then that if we were to put a current carrying wire, a wire that has a current flowing through it, into a magnetic field, then that entire wire should experience a force because of those moving charges through that wire in that magnetic field. And that is exactly what we experience when we do that. If an electric current flows through a wire that's placed in a magnetic field, each individual electron flowing through that wire has a force exerted on it by the magnetic field. The force is then transferred to the conductor by the collisions the electrons have with the atoms in that conductor. So in this picture here, we have a wire that has a current flowing through it. That current is flowing from left to right. And we've placed it in between uh, two magnets here. So our magnetic field points from this side to this side. So here would be the North Pole and here would be the South Pole of that magnet. By our right hand rule then, all, what we've got is we've got charges moving through that conductor, right? Those charges are moving from left to right. So by our right-hand rule, if our magnetic field is pointing from this side to this side, there's our B, then we're going to have a force exerted on that wire straight up. So what we're seeing here is that we can use our right-hand rule for a current carrying wire in a magnetic field to determine the direction of a force on it. If, for example, we take our current and we change its directions, okay? So here, we've got a wire in a magnetic field. The magnetic field goes into the page. If we've got our current flowing up that wire, Here, so our, our field goes into the page, then we experience a force to the left. It would cause that wire to bend out toward the left. If we switch the direction of the current so that it flows from top to bottom, then we experience a force this direction to the right. But just knowing the direction of a force isn't enough for us. We're physics students. We want to be able to figure out magnitude of force. So we have an expression for it. This here is Bill. Bill will give us the magnetic force on a current carrying wire, where that magnetic force is equal to the magnetic field times the current times the length of the wire times the uh, sine of the angle between the wire and the magnetic field which tells us that if the field and the current are in the same direction, the angle would be zero, then no force is exerted on the conductor. So whenever we're given a situation where we have a wire with a, running through, with a current running through it in a magnetic field, we're going to use Bill here to help us figure out the size of the force. For example, if we have a current with 12.5 amps going from east to west, the magnetic field goes north to south, south to north uh, with a strength of 55 microtesla. We want to find the force acting on a 25 centimeter length of wire. So what we do is we break out Bill and we make sure that all of our values are in the correct SI units and we end up with a, a force of 1.72 times 10 to the negative 4 newtons. Now, by right-hand rule, the direction of that force is going to be into the page, okay, because these are electrons that are moving through this wire. And so the, the, the direction of the force is going to be opposite that of our tall man finger in a right-hand rule. So, bottom line here is that the magnetic field can affect an electric current by exerting a force on the conductor. So, it should be possible then that an electric current can have some sort of effect on magnetic fields, right? So, it's a pretty good bet that it would. So, back in the 19th century, a guy named Hans Christian Orsted figured out that if he placed a compass 
next to a wire, okay, and then ran a current through that wire, that compass needle got deflected. Now, as we've seen, we can deflect compass needles with magnetic fields. When we bring a, a compass around a magnet, that compass needle gets deflected or in that magnetic field. Now, this Orsted fellow also found that if he reversed the direction of the current, then the compass needle would swing around in the opposite direction. And what this was was clear evidence that an electric current sets up its own magnetic field. This was a, a discovery that it basically changed the world. It paved the way for being able to make motors and electromagnets, all kinds of things, okay? But basically what it means is a wire that has a current moving through it sets up a magnetic field around that wire in such a way that we can draw that magnetic field around that current carrying wire as a series of concentric circles as shown in this drawing. We know this is a, like a circular magnetic field because when we place uh, uh, compasses around a current carrying wire like this here, each of those compass needles get deflected in such a way as to result in a circular uh, magnetic field. So what we're able to do is use another right-hand rule specifically for current carrying wires to determine the direction that the magnetic field that is set up by those current carrying wires goes. And the way it works is you take your right hand and you put your thumb in the direction of the current on that wire and your fingers wrap around that wire and the direction that your fingers wrap around that wire will be the direction of that magnetic field. For example, in this picture here, because our field wraps around this wire, goes down and around this direction, okay, then our fingers would wrap under that wire and around the top of it, showing us that the direction of our current is from left to right in this wire. Over here, because our current moves around this wire in this direction here, where it's moving around in this uh, counter counterclockwise circle, Okay, then our field wraps in that direction around that wire. It would show us then that our current here is going from down here through the wire this direction. So this right hand rule then works for currents moving in straight sections of current carrying wire. However, if we coil up that wire and make several loops in it and then run a current through it, we can intensify that magnetic field. This is because the magnetic flux lines add together. The field increases with each added loop, and when a conductor is formed into a whole lot of loops, like a coiled spring, it develops, when current flows through the loops, an intensely strong magnetic field. And we call these devices inductors or coils. We can intensify the magnetic field in a conductor by increasing the number of loops or turns, by increasing the current, or construct the turns over a highly permeable material, such as a soft iron, that we call a core. And when the core is something that's called a ferromagnetic material, then we've made what's called an electromagnet. Now, electromagnets have a lot of advantages over permanent magnets. They can develop really intense magnetic fields, much stronger than permanent magnetic fields, the kind that, like, if you've ever seen at a junkyard or something, cars being lifted up by a magnet, that magnet is an electromagnet, not a permanent magnet. So uh, uh, electromagnets can be kind of fancy, like this one here, or they can be really simple, like wrapping a nail, wrapping a nail with wire and attaching it to a battery will make an electromagnet that will pick up paper clips and whatnot. Electromagnets are also important because, well, they can be turned on and off. Now these pictures here show a magnetic field around a current carrying wire. Here's a long straight wire and the iron filings just form into a circle around the thing showing the magnetic field. When we form that wire into a loop like this it acts kind of like a, a weak bar magnet as some of those field lines come closer together through the middle of that loop. Then when we put a whole bunch of loops together you can see that field totally intensify inside there. The field outside this, and this is called it, this is a coil that's, it doesn't have any material inside here, so it's not an electromagnet, it's a coil or a solenoid. Uh, the field outside the solenoid is 
pretty weak compared to the field inside it. But we can still use a right hand rule here to see, to find the direction of the current in each of these wires, right? So here, our fingers would just wrap around that wire with our fingers in the direction of that field, and we can see that the current is coming from the bottom of the wire to the top. Over here with this coil, if we put our fingers through that coil in the direction of that magnetic field, we can see then that our current is flowing from this side through this loop to this side here, okay? Because in order to do that, in order to put our fingers through the loop in the direction of the arrows, our thumb has to point from top to bottom. Same is true then over here for, for the uh, solenoid. As we put our fingers through the loop, we can see that the current runs from top to bottom. Now before moving on, I want to make an important distinction. I mentioned uh, electromagnets and solenoids. An electromagnet always has some kind of uh, permeable uh, core to it, whereas a solenoid is a coil that has a hollow car core. These are often also called air cores. Now in machinery that uses that use solenoids, adjacent to that coil is often a soft iron or steel rod that fits into that hollow core. So when the solenoid is energized, when the current switched on, it develops a strong magnetic field, pulls the rod into it. This mechanical action is useful. It can turn switches on and off. It can control all kinds of things in cars, appliances, weapon systems, all of this. Use, uh, have great use of solenoids. Okay, so let's turn our attention back to straight sections of wire with current running through them. As always, we want to be able to quantify the magnetic field strength around a straight section of current carrying wire. To do that, we use this equation here. This is our magnetic field around a current carrying wire, where B is the magnetic field strength, mu naught is the permeability of free space, it's a constant that's also called, and I think it's called on the equation sheet, uh, vacuum permeability. It has a value of 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7 tesla meters per amp. I is the current in the wire, and R is the distance from some point outside that wire to the center of that wire. Now, as a way to help you remember this equation, I called it Bill, right? Because it's just B-I-L. So I called it Bill. That's the magnetic force on a current carrying wire. That's just a way to help you to remember it. Oh, I've also got a thing that I, I use to help you remember magnetic field around a current carrying wire. I call it buoy. So we've got Bill and buoy, which I know this is a Greek letter mu, which has a totally different sound, but it kind of looks like um, an English uh, U, so I call it buoy. In our next video, we're going to look at how we can use Bill and Bowie interchangeably in some really great problem-solving situations. But for now, we're just going to focus on just Bowie and a long straight wire with a current of 1.5 amps. And we want to find the magnitude of the magnetic field 5 centimeters away from that wire. So here's our wire. Here's the point 5 centimeters away. It's got a current moving in it at 1.5 amps. We're going to use buoy here to help us figure out the magnetic field that is created, that's set up by this wire. To do that, we put in all of our constants and our values. We end up with a magnetic field of 6 times 10 to the negative 6 Tesla right here. Okay. Now, by right-hand rule, let's take a look at the direction of that magnetic field at that point. Here, we put our thumb in the direction of our current. We wrap our fingers around that wire so that they would go down behind the wire and curl up. So at this point above the wire, at this point where we're looking, the magnetic field at that point is coming up out of the page directly at us at that point. All right, so that's a magnetic force of on a current carrying wire, Bill, and a magnetic field around a current carrying wire buoy. And we're going to take a look in the next video at putting wires together so they're, they're parallel sections of wire with current running through them and how do these fields and forces then interact between those two different wires. See you then.